In this video, I want to show you something called pixels per unit that we can set for our sprites. So in previous videos, I did mention that there is some other alternatives to how we change the size of the grid. And this is the better method, but I wanted to show you how to use the grid snapping and changing the grid size first. So now we're going to change it and we're going to change the size of our sprites. So we want to go up to the snap settings here. And remember from last time, if this is grayed out, it might mean that this dropdown you have set to local. So make sure that's set on global. And then let's click this down arrow. We set it to 1.25. Let's set this back to one. Now the reason we wanna do it this way, instead of changing that grid size, which will work fine, but if we do it that way, when we have a tile on our grid space here, and we wanna move it from one tile to the next, we're gonna to have to move it by an uneven number. So in our case, we'd have to move it by 1.25. And once you start moving around the screen, that's gonna get confusing. It's not gonna be very easy to look at. If we change our sprites to match the grid size and we make our sprite squares equal to one grid space, what that's gonna allow us to do is when we wanna move a grid space from right here to this one, all we have to do is add one and it's always gonna be the same. So if we wanted to move two spaces, then we would add two to it. So let's go and change that. Now this is something that you have to do with each sprite. So we're gonna do it as we start adding sprites to our game. We're gonna do it to them in batches as we add them. Now, if we look at these tiles here, so we're using the grass set right now. If we click on, say, this tile, for instance, if we look over here in these settings, we have pixels per unit and it's set to 100. So what this means is every one of these grid spaces that we look at here is one unity unit. So if we select just a random object, let's just make, you know what, let's just drag one of these into our scene. I'm gonna move it over here. And if we look at it, so we have a position. So right here, it's set at negative 7.5 on the X. Each one of these numbers is a unity unit. So the number one, number two, all of those are gonna now correspond to each of these grid spacing. So by changing the pixels per unit, as you can see right now, this tile, it's much bigger than one grid space. It fits outside of it. And that's because what we're doing is by default, we're telling Unity that every 100 pixels on this image equals one grid space, one unit. Now, if we look down below here, you can see the actual size of the image. So it's 128 by 128. So currently what's happening is because it's 128, we're saying 100 units or 100 pixels on this makes one unit but then it has the extra 28, that overhang. So instead of having to do them one by one, what we can do is we can click on the first, hold shift and click on the last one in this folder. And now we can make a change here since all of these are the same size, we can set them to 128, hit apply. And now notice this resized. So it's still kind of sticking out and that's because it's not on a whole number here. So let's put it back to zero, zero. Now let's go find it in our scene. And you can notice our prefabs got broken. That's, that's fine. I'm gonna show you how to fix that in a moment here. Now let's move this over here. So if we start moving it, say we wanna go right here. So we can see that's gonna be negative 8.5 and 0.5. Now the reason it's doing the, the 0.5 is because our center on this image is actually right in the center, or sorry, I mean our pivot. Our pivot's in the center, not on the corner. So we have to factor in that size. What we can also do here is let's go and select all of these again. Now you see we have a pivot option here. So right now the pivot's in the center. So when we put a, a position, so say if we put, you know, five and five, for our X and our Y, it's gonna be setting the center position to five and five. So that means it's not gonna be in a grid space, it's gonna be the center right on the intersect of those. 
But what we can do is we can change that pivot point to be right here in the bottom left corner. So let's go and do that. Let's select all of these. And as I mentioned, we're just using the grass ones as an example. If you start dragging other ones into use, you're going to want to do the same step for each of those. But it's going to be the same step. So let's change this pivot to bottom left. Let's hit apply. Now let's select this grass one that's in here. Let's move it over here and let's put whole numbers. So let's put negative nine and zero. Now, if we zoom in, we see it's right in this grid space. And now let's turn our snapping back on. And now if I move, you see every time it moves a unit, it's going to be in the grid space. Okay, so we have that set up, but now we do have to fix our prefab here. So the reason this kind of broke like this and we have these spacing is because we basically told Unity we want to use more pixels as one unit. And that's going to make it almost like it shrinks. So let's go back up to our prefabs folder. Let's double click on our platform, the one by five. And now we can just fix it in here. So let's select the first one. And if we look, that's on zero, zero. And the next one we have is at 1.25. So we can change this to one. And it looks like they're not quite in order here, but same thing here. So we can set this to two. We can set this one to three. And the last one we can set to four. So now we actually have our platform in the right size. So now let's set this one to be at position zero, zero. And notice the bottom left corner is at zero, zero, which is the center of our game. And each one of them fits inside a tile. And now it pushed that out to all of these. So you can see that these don't fit right in the tile because we move them manually. Something that we can do with that here is if we click on this little down arrow for the grid snapping, it has this option to align selected and we could click on any of these. So what this will do is this is going to align an object to the closest grid spot. So if we select X here, notice it saw that it was at 2.8 something. So the closest one would be three. And then we could do the same for the Y. So now it's going to snap to there and we could just hit all axes and that's going to fix it for all of them. So now if we select this one, we can see this one is at whole numbers as well. And we could do this for each of these, but in this case, these were all just kind of placeholders. So I'm actually gonna do, just delete all of these except for the first one. And even this one, we just played with the colors just to demonstrate. So we'll clean that up and we'll make a whole new platform later. So you know what, for the meantime, I'm actually just gonna delete this one out of the scene. So now all we have is our background in the scene. In this video, we're going to start making a little boulder so that we can demonstrate some movement in physics. But first, before we do that, I just want to extend our background a little bit here. So if we look on our game tab, we have it set to HD, so 1920 by 1080. And this is just kind of sitting in the middle. And if yours isn't on 1920 by 1080 yet, just click on that and you should see the option here. So let's go to the scene view. Let's just select our background objects. I'm going to take the actual background image and I'm just going to scale this up a bit. So I'm just going to select T on my keyboard. And now I can drag the sides. So you can see this is the, the line of where the camera ends. So if we move it just a little bit past, it's going to fill up the camera. And in this case here, we are technically stretching this image to not its normal proportions. For this case, it's going to look fine because it's a, it's a little 2D platformer. So even with it stretched a bit, it doesn't look bad and we can replace that later. We just want something to right now just to kind of prototype our game and look better than just an empty background. Okay. So I'm just going to move the spinner back up here. Okay. And now if I look at the game, it looks more like a actual game scene 
And you know what? I'm actually going to move this background down a bit. So, you know, I'm going to move it, make this kind of down here, and then I'll just stretch this out. So again, it's, it's going to look a little weird being so stretched, but we'll fix that later when we make a, a serious level for our game. Okay, so if we look here, that looks a bit better. I'll move the sun a bit lower and let's just put some of our platforms back. So we don't need these weird colors anymore. So let's double click on this platform and to go into prefab edit mode. Let's select this one. Let's set it back to white and let's select these. I'm just holding control and clicking. So then it selects both. Now I'm going to set this color back to white and then we exit. So now we have a kind of a normal platform. So let's drag a few of these in here. Okay, so we have this, we have our grid snapping on. Remember this is on here. So as I drag it around, it's always going to snap to a grid spot. Okay, so let's just do it here. You know what? I'm going to move this background down a bit more. Stretch this up and we can pretend our game's kind of in the sky right now for our, just for our testing purposes. So move this down a bit lower. Yeah, I like something like this. Okay, so I move it up. So now our platforms are kind of floating in the sky. Okay, let's add a couple more. And I'm just pressing W on the keyboard for the move tool now. So then I can click and drag. And I'm just going to move, I'm going to put a platform here. Now, instead of having to drag the prefab in every time, one thing I could do is I could right click on this one and select duplicate. And another way of doing that is if I just select it and hold control D on the keyboard, that's the shortcut for duplicate. And that's a really common one to use. Okay. So I'll move this platform over here. Okay, and that's good for now. At least we have a little platform. So what I'm going to do is you can use any art that you want. I'm actually just going to go back to the Kenny website here. And I was looking at this platformer art request one. You can find it on his site or I'll attach it to this lecture as well. And this one, I was looking these two little rocks or whatever they are. It looks like they would work good for a boulder. So I'm just going to download them. I'm going to extract that and I'll bring that into our sprites packs. Okay. So now if we go to art requests, go to tiles and now we can find them here. So I think I'm just going to use this one here. Now this one, we don't necessarily have to change the pixels per unit. So if we look here notice these are 70 by 70. But the thing is, we're not using this as a level tile in our game. So you want to think of all these tiles as part of the grid. So they should align with the grid system for obstacles and various elements and, you know, things that could explode in our game or players, other things like that, we could have different sizes. So if we wanted, if we look at this here, I'm just going to drag it in and let's change it to be in a higher layer. So I'm just going to put it on platformers for right now. So if we look at this, it's a bit small, so we could change those size or we could just leave it as it is and we could just resize it manually to where we want it. I'm going to actually change the size a bit though. So I'm going to set this to be 70. That way it fits one unit. So if we drag it in now, we can set it to platforms. Okay. So that that's a pretty good size. And now one other thing we can look at notice on the outside of our rock here, it looks a bit blurry. So 
we have some weird edges. So Unity is actually trying to clean up the edges of this image to make it look better. And for most types of games, that does improve the quality. But when we're working with sprites in a, a sprite-based game like this, we don't want it to do that. So if we go back and we select this one that we put in here, so notice we have the pixels per unit. There's another setting here that's called filter mode. And what this is doing is this is adjusting how Unity is trying to filter this image and clean up the edges. When we're dealing with sprites in a sprite-based game, we don't want to filter at all. We want to use the image how it originally looks. So we want to set it to this one called point, which is no filter. So if we set that, hit apply, watch what's going to happen to our image here. Notice now it looks how it's supposed to as a rock. So I mean, when you zoom in, it doesn't necessarily look that great, but that's because we're zoomed in so far. When you're out like this, you're going to start to notice that difference on, on pixel art. So that one's kind of a preference of how you want to do it. So if you want to set it that way, or if you want the look where it is more blended, it's all just visual cosmetics of how you want your game to look. So that's something you have control over. You don't have to follow that exactly like I do, but just make sure you know that this exists. So if you start creating some, some sprites and objects in your game and you notice they look blurry and they're not how you drew them or how they were when you downloaded them, this is the first setting you want to check here. Make sure this is set to point. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's go back up to our prefabs folder. Let's rename this rock. I'm just gonna call it, you know, I'm just gonna call it rock. Now let's drag that and make that into a prefab. Okay, so we have a rock that's gonna act like a boulder now. It doesn't actually do anything yet. And in the next video, we're gonna start to make this come to life. So I will see you there.